Hey guys, so I'm back again with a recap of Game of Thrones. This is season eight, episode number four. Okay, so it's late at night. It's, what time is it? It is 10.53. I just got done watching this episode and I was like, let me just go ahead and film a recap, y'all. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably not even gonna edit this, so all the ums and alls will be there. I just washed my face. I'm getting ready for bed, so I'm gonna like slide in my nighttime routine as I recap this episode, let's get to it. If you're wondering what I'm rolling under my eyes, it's just a little jojoba oil with some frankincense and some elemi. Those are just some anti-aging essential oils. Gotta keep that skin round about the eyes, nice and tight. All right, so let's get right into this episode. Um, first of all, let's keep Daenerys Targaryen lifted up in prayer because honey child is going through it. She has been through the ringer this season and this episode, they showed her absolutely no mercy from just feelings of insecurity about John taking the throne in her place from losing one of her kids tonight. Oh, talking about heart out of your chest. I was not expecting a dragon to die tonight. I thought this episode was going to be super chill because last up last week's episode was so intense the whole battle of Winterfell and I really thought that you know we were gonna just kind of chill out tonight and then they up and just kill a dragon out of nowhere I'm like y'all can we chill tonight I just Daenerys is going through it so at the beginning of the episode they have this whole you know scene where of course they're burying the dead or they're burning the dead. They have all these pyres. I mean, the pyres are three-story homes. That's how many people they lost. They got a pile of people on top of people. She had to say goodbye to Jorah. Sansa was crying over Thithi. I mean, it was just, it was a rough first few minutes. Uh, John gave a beautiful speech and then they lit the pyres on fire. Uh, later that night, you know, they're they're having like a dinner after the battle and nobody really wants to celebrate. Nobody's happy. It was a rough day. It was a rough win, even though Arya came through like Air Jordan in the last three seconds of the game clutch. It was still a hard won battle and they are feeling it. And so, you know, uh, Daenerys is trying to win over the North. She's really trying to get people to see her for who she is but the problem is she's not doing it in a genuine way she's just like I'm just gonna do xyz so these people will like me and follow me wherever I go and call me their queen and I feel like in the earlier seasons when she was you know breaking the chains and freeing slaves it was genuine like yes she knew that she was supposed to be the queen of the seven kingdoms and sit on the iron throne but she was like I legitimately have to free these people because I don't want to see people enslaved and I felt like that resonated and that is why the Unsullied and the all the slaves and the um the Dothraki and everybody that sh who, who's followed her up to this point did so because it was a genuine like I want to help you because it's the right thing to do you can choose to follow me at this point but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna break your chains because the chains just need to be broken she has kind of left that and now she's in the theme of I'm the queen so bow down okay like no I don't care about doing what's right I want you to bow down to me because I'm the rightful heir of the throne and not to say that she isn't well she isn't but she, you know she is kind of um but it's just like it's not genuine anymore and I think the northern people are seeing through her facade her facade and that's why she's not winning over Sansa and Arya and all these people that she's pissed that won't accept her as their queen I'm like they don't feel the genuineness like everything you're doing has an underlying motive to it like giving Gendry um his you know what is what was the name of the land I don't know Robert Baratheon them like them's land you know giving him that and then she's whispering to Tyrion like you're not the only one who's clever like okay so there's a motive you're giving him this land so that he will be loyal to you so that you can have it's not because it was the right thing to do like she didn't give Gendry that that 
house and you know give him Robert Baratheon's name because it was the right thing to do he helped you in this battle he made all the weapons that y'all were fighting with he didn't want anything from you he just fought because it was the right thing to do and you should have given him that land just because it was the right thing to do but now you have this underlying motive and then you wonder why Sansa side eyeing you all the time like she doesn't trust you because she feels like everything you do has an underlying motive to it and she don't know what's genuine and what's not anymore so I see both sides of it like I get the whole political thing like she is a queen and she does have to come up with ways for people to like her it's like being a politician you have to lie to win the people over sometimes but at the same time if somebody sees through your BS you can't be mad that they saw through your BS and don't trust you because it is BS at the end of the day um so they're having this whole celebration now you know after she gives Gendry his land it, it kind of lightens the mood and Everybody's laughing. People are loving on Jon Snow because he's home. Like these are his people. The Wildlings have accepted him. The North loves him. He He's at home and she just can't stand it. And now it's like she's swirling. She's coming unhinged and she's worried that her boo thing is going to try to take the throne from out of her hands. And she's just sick to her stomach and she can't celebrate. Lord Barris is watching her like a hawk because he can see her coming unhinged. I think he's afraid that that Targaryen insanity is starting to kick in a little bit, like paranoid, they're all after me, I can't trust anybody. And then it's gonna snowball into what her daddy was, which is the Mad King. Um, so he's nervous because of how she's acting. Uh, her and John have a conversation later. She's trying to put things back to how they were. She's like, look, I just want to love you. You know, I know I'm your auntie, but you know that my family do stuff like that. We don't care. Um, it's a little bit strange for John because, you know, when they're having the scene where they're kissing, he stops and like pauses and is like, oh my God, like, are we doing this? And she's like, what's the problem? <laughs> Cause like, that's what they do. Um, so it's, it's, it's a cultural difference in, in her family, you know, having a relationship with someone who was your cousin or your nephew or someone very close in relation to you is not weird. Jon Snow them didn't really do stuff like that. Um, and then there's the issue of her not wanting him to tell anybody. And of course, you know, good old honest Abe got to tell the truth all the time. Now I was on her side. And I didn't like how she was kind of forceful with it. Like if you don't do what I say, then you not like, we can't be together. He, he is promising her that like, listen, my family can, will understand. We can all live together in peace and harmony. John, you're wrong. Like, I love you. I love you to the depths of my heart. You are wrong, sir. There is nothing about Daenerys that Sansa and Arya like or enjoy, nor will they ever trust her as their queen. There is absolutely no way that these two families can live in peace and harmony with her as the queen. It's just not gonna work unfortunately and i think that danny had the right idea with him not telling anybody um but you know good old honest john he has to tell the truth all the time everything else be darned he he cannot not be honest like it he just has to lay it all out there he's honest to a fault you know i agree with danny i think it was best that he not tell anybody anything keep it to himself take it to the grave let her be the queen he already said he don't mind her ruling let her have it don't tell anybody, but of course he can't. So he tells Arya and Sansa, which means that they, uh, no, well, he tells Arya and Sansa and then Sansa tells Tyrion because she really thinks that Jon's going to be a better ruler. And at this point, Jon may be a better ruler, but at the same time, I feel like, and it's, it's the progression of the show. They have to kind of make Danny look a little crazy because it makes good TV. But at the same time, if you think about it, put yourself in her shoes, you know, like, she wants to win. She has she has done all that she can for the other great war. And now it's her time to shine and everybody's wanting to pump the brakes. And she's like, no. <sighs> They're trying to talk her out of hurting innocent people. She finally agrees. But she had a good point when she said talking to Cersei won't help. I'll do it to let the people see that I tried to extend an olive branch and show them some mercy. But at the same time, I already know what's going to happen in the end. She wasn't wrong when she said that. That whole scene to me was set up to make her look like she was ruthless and cold and heartless. And But it's Cersei. You know good and well Cersei is not going to compromise or agree to just take her crown off and be like, okay, guys, I give up. We all know Cersei's not going to give in. So why, why even offer it to her? 
But she was like, okay, we can, if that's what y'all want to do, fine, offer it to her. But she not going to listen. And she didn't. Like, exactly what we thought was going to happen, happened. So I thought that that scene was a little bit unfair toward Daenerys because the point of it was to make her look like she was being ruthless and she's getting more and more um, unmerciful and not like the Daenerys that we knew her to be back in the previous seasons. But it's Cersei. I mean, yeah, I agreed with her. Talking to Cersei is not going to help. Offering her any type of compromise is not going to help. She's not going to take it. It's just not going to happen. So Tyrion is afraid. He's nervous. Him and Lord Varys are having a conversation because now, of course, he's told him that Jon Snow is the rightful heir to the throne. And Lord Varys is on his way to getting himself killed. Um, Daenerys in the last season warned him and said, you know, because he's known for for flipping loyalties he he he's loyal to he says the people and his loyalty to the to the his loyalty to the people is going to get him killed because she already warned him that if he starts switching up the swag on her she will burn him alive he promised that he would be loyal to her and that he would tell her the truth he tried to tell her the truth she didn't listen and so now he's talking about switching again to the betterment of the people and getting behind Jon Snow behind her back he should have listened to Tyrion when Tyrion said we're talking about treason. I feel like in the next episode or two, uh, Daenerys is going to find out that Lord Varys is going behind her back and plotting on her, trying to kill her so that Jon Snow could become king because that's what he does. He poison folks. He, 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 he arranges to have people killed if he feels they're not uh, the right person to be in power. That's what he does. And it's going to get him killed. Um... Melisandre already told him that he was going to die in that in in King's Landing and I think that it's coming sooner rather than later. He needs to tread lightly. I hear what he's saying and I do think that Jon Snow will be the better leader, but this is not the way to go about it. Whispering in the dark and planning things and plotting, she's going to find out and she's going to kill you. So that's my prediction for Lord Varys. He don't have much time left. He's going to get himself killed. Um Tyrion is nervous. Tyrion really wants all this to work out. He really wants to believe in Daenerys and he hates how this battle is going. But he can't, like, these are two women who will not quit. They're not going to compromise. They're not going to quit. It's not going to happen. So there's going to have to be fire raining from the sky and bloodshed. And I know that's what Tyrion doesn't want, but it's kind of inevitable. With these two girls... It, it, there's no way around it. It's going to be a messy battle and it, people are going to die. Innocent people. You know what? And, and if I was a person who lived in King's Landing and they told me some lady had dragons and was trying to fight my queen, I'd be like, I'm out. Like I'm moving. Like I'm not coming into the gates. You cannot protect me from dragon fire. Like I am going to go wait this out in a field somewhere off to myself and I'll come back when all this is blown over. Like, I feel like this is literally like Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un when he was like threatening to bomb us. Like, we're sitting here like, hey, we don't have nothing to do with this. Don't bomb us. And like, innocent people are going to die because of it. Oh, <sighs> what else happened? Oh, the dragon dying. Yeah, so that totally caught me off guard. I was not ready i was relaxing you know they're pulling up to dragonstone daenerys is flying drogon and wait viserion was the one that got turned into the uh to the white walker so what's the other drogon i don't remember the one that john used to ride but good thing john did not ride that dragon because he would have been done for I mean, it's a beautiful scene. The boats are coming in. Daenerys and her other dragon are flying. All of a sudden, bang! Spear to the heart. I was like, huh? Did I just see that? Then another one, boom, right after. Dragon stabbed in the neck. I was not prepared. And I felt really bad for him. Like, I, I, it's not even a real, it's not even real. It's CGI and my feelings were hurt. I don't like when animals die in TV shows. Like, I, I'd be more sad about the animals than the doggone people. But, yeah, so, you know, they had Euron waiting on her when she pulled up at the house. And, and he, he took one of the dragons out. So, now they're down to one, which still, you know, powerful. But, uh, down to one. It's tough now. Um, and, of course, in this whole battle, they destroyed a bunch of ships. They captured Masande. As soon as I saw Masande was captured, I knew she was dead. I, I just went ahead and said goodbye to her in my mind because I was like, there's no way that Cersei's going to return her alive. It just, there's no way it could happen. Um, 
this was basically the last ditch effort for there not to be total bloodshed and fire and brimstone raining from the sky on King's Landing. Tyrion walks out, talks to Kyburn. Uh, he's trying to tell him to surrender. Of course, it's Cersei. Not, no surrendering is going to happen. Um, of course, same thing with Daenerys. No surrendering is going to happen. Tyrion walks up. They draw the arrows. Cersei puts her hand up. Of course, she puts her hand down. She's not going to kill Tyrion. She's done this before. I was like, come on, Tyrion, with your speech. She's not going to kill you. Um, and, you know, he pleads with her to let Masende go. And can we please just do this peacefully? Like, let your crown go. But boy, it was a beautiful speech. It was very heartfelt. They had the violence playing in the background. Anyway, Cersei ain't doing that. So she tells Masande, if you got any last words, go ahead and say them now. Masande says Dracaris, which, you know, of course, and then they, the mountain chops her head off and... <sighs> Poor Grey Worm. I mean, God, to not have a penis and find a woman to love you and then see her get killed like that. Just, ah. Uh. So, of course, now Daenerys is hot. She is 38 hot. She is Nashville hot, chicken hot, and ready to burn it down. That's basically what Masande was telling her. That was the code word. She was like, look, they about to kill me. All right, you my homegirl. We've been riding since season three burn it down Daenerys like that was the last words that Masande had for her and that's exactly what's about to happen next week Daenerys is about to burn King's Landing down if her dragon does not get hit with an arrow first which is very possible so what is Daenerys gonna do if dragon number three gets taken out of the game I don't know We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, so that's basically it. My thoughts or like my predictions, um, more people are gonna die. Oh, I forgot, Gendry proposed to Arya. Oh, how could I forget that? So yeah, after, you know, Daenerys made him a lord of his own place, he runs and finds Arya, gets down on one knee, tells her she's beautiful and he wants her to be the lady of, well, I can't think of the name, y'all put it in the comments. I forgot what his house was called. And as soon as he said, be the lady, I, sh I just shook my head and put my head down. And I literally, before she even said her line, I said, she's not a lady. I said, nope, she's, she's going to say no. She's not a lady. I literally said it and then she said it. She said, I'm not a lady. That's not me. And it made me sad because I really wanted them to get together. And in my mind, I was like, you, we don't have to call you the lady. We can call you something else. We can call you sir. We can call you whatever you want. Just be with this man. He's so sweet and they're so cute together. And I'm just, I'm sad she turned him down. And then her and the hound rode off to, win, uh, to King's Landing to die together, apparently. Uh, you know, she's, she thinks she's going to kill Cersei. And after she killed the Night King, she can pretty much do whatever she wants. Um, I don't think that they would have Arya kill two major villains in the same show, but I wouldn't put it past her. She killed the Night King. She could very well sneak in at the end and put on the face of whoever and kill Cersei. It could happen. She's a bad girl. She can do no wrong. She does whatever she wants. So she could very well kill Cersei. I don't know. But yeah, so that's it. <laughs> so please, please, please jump in the comments and let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know what you think about Daenerys and her running off the rails and how she's, how her character has developed. Let me know what you think about Jon Snow. Do you think he should be the actual king? Um, let me know what you think about Tyrion and Cersei and Jaime and Brienne. Oh my God, there was so much in this episode. Jamie rolled off on Brienne and I knew it was gonna happen like I knew when they ended up having sex that he wasn't there I was like he's not staying with her he's I, I literally said about four times that he she's gonna be heartbroken when he runs back to Cersei and of course he did but yeah let me know in the comments let's have a discussion about this episode thank you guys so much for watching I apologize for it being rough and unedited but I'm tired y'all I'm just about to upload this and go to bed <laughs> I'll see y'all in the next one bye